Hello, everybody, and welcome back to more Octopath Traveler. All right. This video is probably going to be released early, so keep that in mind. So, you get through the first handful of chapters, and you realize quite quickly, oh shit, the chapter two missions are actually really high level. You have someone like Hanit at level 27, Alfin at level 24, Ulbrich is another one where I think he's at like level 27 as well, if I recall correctly. I'm pretty sure he's, yeah, 27. Uh, Tressa and Cyrus are both 22 and 24 respectively. The issue with this is the fact that most players, even if you go through the stories and even if you go through all eight stories, uh, chapter ones, it is highly unlikely you're going to be anywhere near these levels. At best, you're probably going to be pushing 20 on maybe two of your characters, depending on if you still use your favorites. So, how do you deal with this massive level gap? Well, the easiest way, well, the way I'm going to show you guys is actually a grinding method that takes place here near Stone near Stone Garden. Now, I'm aware that there are multiple methods of grinding on the internet. The big one, uh, there's two big ones I see. One is the King Fisher strategy, which happens way the fuck up here, and while this one is incredibly effective in the fact that you get a crap ton of XP out of it, it's also not preferable. I'll tell you why. It's not preferable because you're spending an incredibly large amount of X, large amount of time and resources trying to do that method. And they expect, and people honestly recommend this method. The other method I see quite often is to hit up these other dungeons and caves all throughout the realm. You usually find them on like the uh, city paths that lead off into like a wooded area or some other area that leads into like a cave or something. The problem is, is that Octopath Traveler is kind of fucking dishonest and you will walk into these caves thinking, oh, it says recommended level 20 and then get your ass almost handed to you. So, how do we combat this? Well, the first thing to do is to realize that the game's recommended level is kind of a fucking lie. I mean, it's telling you the truth, that's the level they recommend, but a better way to say it is, like, that's a bare minimum. So, bare minimum going into an area, you should be at least level 18. Bare minimum going into an area, you should be at least level 20. I don't know if, I mean, that might be common knowledge, but given the fact that they use the word recommended, and in my own personal experience, having started this LP, that recommended level has been probably closer to an effing lie than, like, true fact, I kind of feel comfortable in saying that. The goal here, as with any grinding session, is to be able to grind relatively carefree without the fear of death. Now, I'm aware I'm a little over level, but this is how I got to that point. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly where I went and what you wanna fight. The area we're gonna be heading to is level 17 or 18. And you gotta remember, up until this point, assuming you're still on chapter one, you haven't been getting amazing XP from monsters very often, outside of like bosses. So our goal here is to start getting some good XP. Now, to do this, I have some recommendations. Top three best characters to use in this situation. Ulbrich, Hunnit, and Cyrus. They are your, your golden gooses. These three characters will obliterate together. Hell, you can go, you can go twosies if you want. You can just go, um, you can go Ulbrich and Hunnit. You can go Ulbrick and Cyrus. You can go Hanit and Cyrus. You can go. You can. You can do any combination of the three, and you will have pretty much the same results. Now, let me explain why I recommend this. So, there's a few reasons. One, it's kind of keeping in line with my theory towards grinding. Is that if you're gonna grind in a video game, you you want to minimize the risk. 
So we're in the, this is approximately where you want to be in this little area right here. We're actually going to go to our skills and unequip the support skill I have turned on, which is the evasive maneuvers. And we're also going to turn on, turn off uh, evil ward. Well, actually we kind of want that because there's actually one encounter you can run into here that you don't want. So let's go. All right, perfect, we found it. If you see this encounter, effing run. It is a waste of your time. Do not do it. This is the worst possible encounter you could get. The experience is not worth the time. This thing has way too much HP to be worthwhile and you're basically wasting your effing time. First chance, run away. Don't do it. <laughs> that was too easy, actually, that was really easy. So yeah, that encounter, don't mess with. That is the only encounter you will run into in this area that isn't worth it. And I, I gauged not worth it by time. So, this isn't a great one, but this is actually close to what we want. These guys right here, Highland Ratkins, are the guys you really want to mess with. These guys give good experience. Uh, really good experience, and you'll understand that once we actually jump into this. The battle is truly so let's get rid of these guys real quick. This isn't very difficult for me to do, honestly. I will cut you down! Hell, we're not even gonna, like fret that much, honestly. I could probably just do a normal fireball and get rid of them. Alright, we're close. There we go. So as you see there, that wasn't too difficult. Now you see here, I got about 116 experience from doing that. Now I know what you're thinking, but Reza, you're like really high level. Here's the thing, guys. This is safe. There is a low risk of you actually dying. And if you do start to take damage, that's fine. But here's the thing, none of these guys deal an aggressive amount of damage providing the fact that you've been getting decent armor as you go. As long as you've been like upgrading your armor at a relatively decent rate, you should be fine. And that's coming from someone who had to do this at like 21. So once again, we're gonna jump right in. And I do like the same thing. I have this standardized at this point. I don't even waste my time trying to get fancy. Cause it's not really worth my time, honestly. Hell, we're just gonna jump into a firestorm, honestly. What next? And then we're gonna go Hunter Skills, Arrow Storm. Um. Screw it. We'll go level slash and finish these guys off. There we go. Now I know what you're thinking. All right, Rezo. You see right there, I got a level. That didn't take me long and on. Now, granted, keep in mind, in two battles, I've already pulled off, well, almost like 200 something uh, XP out of this. And keep in mind, these battles, even at my, now you could argue at my level, I'm making this incredibly easy, right? That could be the argument. I did this, if you guys remember, about halfway through, after I did Tressa's story, I went and leveled everybody up. When I got back, everybody was pushing like mid-20s to high-20s. This is where I did it. Now, before I end this video, there's one other reason why I recommend leveling here, and that is because of Kate's. 
This is another really good one. The really good encounter for this area is the one with like all ratkins when there's like four of them. You can get, you'll get almost, uh, almost 200 experience out of it, honestly. It's really effing good. We'll just go luminescence, that's fine. So, all right. As I finish up this video, my the point I'm trying to make here is actually very easy. The goal of being able to grind is being able to do so in an environment where the amount of resources you're gonna have to expend isn't so great, basically. The point is, you, there's no point in doing it if every time you go to grind, you run the risk of dying, and then you have to like restart your save or pick up from your last save file. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. You don't want to do that. Fuck, I don't even want to do that. And notice, we're getting $500. Almost 600 gold a battle. Yo. That's a lot of money. Bring Tressa in? Shit, you gonna be rich, son. So, I'm hoping, before I wrap this video up, I'm hoping I can grab a uh, Kate. Oh, this is a great example. So this is three Ratkin, and one of them is the stronger version of what we've been fighting. So we're actually just gonna go all in on this fight. Oh wow, they're all broken, damn. Uh, and here's the great thing about this is that Given this setup, you don't even really need to be super effective against them. You can kind of get away with bringing characters who just do good damage. Boom. Let's see how much we get for this. Okay, look at this. We walked away with 154 experience for just killing three of them. Keep this in mind, these guys aren't really that tough. As long as you bought equipment, you should be able to do this easily. This shouldn't require some great level of <laughs> fucking talent out of you. Like I said before, go back and watch my video where I used Tressa, and then go back and then see how many levels I gained with everybody after the fact. The Tressa to the next character I did, because I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure I did Oberic. I don't think I did Oberic yet. Maybe I had. I have to go back and check. But I'm pretty sure it's the Tressa video. I'll have it in the description. I'll have the two videos in the description that you guys can go check. But generally speaking, I find this is the lowest risk area, and the brightest thing about this is you can run into Kates out here. Um. With my, there we go again. With my luck, I can run into about mm, two or three, if I'm lucky, in an hour. And that's like a guaranteed level. Um, if you run into two or three Kates within an hour, you're getting really good XP out of that. And keep in mind, they're hitting her hard, but understand she's a caster first and foremost so she's not gonna have as much hp as say oberic hanit uh effing alfin you know yeah she's gonna take damage and that's fine this is why you bring characters like oberic and them along to balance that shit out we'll get to hanit hunter skills we can go straight to Arrow Storm. What next? Even better, she got it all over again. What next? The hell? Okay. I will cut you down! So, generally speaking, the characters I've chosen tend to be good for this method. Tressa, obviously, you've noticed most of them all have wind weakness. 
But you can accomplish this with a couple of characters that you like using, like Oberic, Hanit, or Cyrus, and you can just run Slipshot. I apologize this video went on so long. I didn't mean for it to go 15. The point I want to make before I wrap this video up is that this is a method that you can do at about level 20 to about 17, somewhere in there. Maybe a little lower if your rest of the team is pretty high up there, around level 20. As long as you have decent equipment, this method is 100% doable. There is nothing stopping this method from helping you get levels. And I've already shown you, you're getting more experience this way with less risk provided you're breaking them then less risk than you would be taking other methods and i would say these enemies are far easier to actually kill without too much specialization uh swords and bows basically and magic is already really good so you could just use anything you want against them at that point anyways guys i hope this video has been helpful jesus almost 16 minutes fuck I uh, hope it's been helpful. This is my solution to the chapter 1, chapter 2 level gap problem. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope it helps you out. God knows it helped me out because I was I was frustrated. Anyways, guys, I will see you all next time. Have a wonderful day. I'm signing out.